Hello guys, welcome to this class. So in this class, we are going to be learning how to get the address of a place using the location coordinates. So the example of what we want to achieve is if we move our map to a new place, to a new point, it will automatically update our address. If we move it to a new point, it will update our address. So what's going on here is that we are using the Google Geocoding API to transform our location coordinates and it will return a formatted address for us, right? So this actually comes in handy because once you are into the app, it will always get your pickup location. So you don't need to set this again, provided that you're starting your trip from the place you are. So this is really, really, very useful. So it's probably going to be a long class. So guys, let's just get right into it. To achieve this, the first thing we need to do will be to enable our Google Geocoding API. And we need to go to our Google Developer Console to do that, right? So I'm already in my own developer account. So what I need to do now is to select my project, which is Uber Clone. So when that loads up, I'll go to Library. And I'll look for Google Geocoding API. It's under Maps. So I'll just view all and this is what we are looking for geocoding API as you can see it says convert between addresses and geographic coordinates so we're going to enable it okay API enabled so click on enable to enable it all right so I need to also make it known to us all right this particular API might require you to provide your billing information, all right? So I'll advise that you go ahead and activate your $300 free Google credits, all right, to be able to use this particular API because you might be getting some errors, all right? And you probably may not know that this is the course of it. So I will just go ahead and activate mine. It might actually ask you to provide some billing information, which is okay. So I'll just go ahead and continue with that so that you always, you know, be able to use the API smoothly without any issues. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in my own information. So I suggest you do that for yours as well. So I'm going to be filling my information now, guys. So my billing is well set up. I can now confidently use the API. Now that I've enabled the API, we need to head back into our app. Okay, so now the first thing we need to do will be to create a new file and we're going to call it a map function helper. So this way we are actually going to put in all functions that has to do with maps, you know, getting our location coordinate and the rest of other stuff. So we're going to say new file and we're going to call it map function function helper. So now we are done with this. So the way to use the Geocoding API is by passing our location coordinates to a particular URL, okay? So we use it to make a web request and we will expect a JSON string in return. And the JSON string will have the formatted address. So guys, I'm going to show us an example of what I mean. So this is a query to a particular coordinate to this coordinate, okay? So this is the URL that we are querying and we are passing in this coordinate. This coordinate is our coordinate. And also we are passing in our API key. So in the end, it will give us a formatted address. This is what we are actually looking for. Okay. So guys, let's go into our code and do this. So the first thing we need to do is to define a new function. Now return a string because we need to build the URL first. Okay. So we're going to call this get geocode url okay and this function we need to pass it our latitude and our longitude okay so we're going to say string url equal to the google apis dot com slash
Okay, so let's go ahead and verify that this is correct. Maps.googleapis.com slash maps slash API geocode JSON. All right, so this is very correct. So we're going to add our latitude, the value for our latitude, and we're going to add a comma. We're going to add the value for our longitude. And we're going to add our key. So we need to define our map key as a global variable because we are going to be using it later on in the app. Okay, so when we define it as a global variable, that means that we need to bring it in when we are initializing this particular class, right? So we're going to pass this in the constructor. So as you guys know, this is the constructor. We need to, when we are initializing this particular class, we need to provide our map key, right? So we're going to say string m map key, right? We're going to say map key equal to m map key. Bam. All right. So we're not done here. We need to return this. Okay. So we're going to say return URL. Okay. Fine. Good. So guys, the next thing to do will now be to make a web request to this particular URL. Okay. So this web request needs to be asynchronous. So we need to use a HTTP client. Actually, there are two ways of making a web request. Number one is through using a normal web request. And the second one is using a HTTP client. So a HTTP client comes in handy when you want to make asynchronous request and you're expecting a JSON string as your response. This is actually a shorthand and it's much easier. But when you want to make a request on your main, on your main trend, then you probably need to use the web request. And when you want to monitor you know, your response and actually the data you send in, you want to monitor every single thing, then the web request is the, is the way to go, all right? But we will just make use of the HTTP client. It's quite very shorthand and straight to the point. So we're gonna say publish to get dual JSON sync, all right? So now we need to pass our URL as a parameter to this particular method, all right? We're gonna say string URL, okay. So now what we need to do, we're gonna say var handler equal to new HTTP. So we need to bring in a reference to our HTTP client. So if you're actually on Visual Studio, how to find this is by clicking on your project title. If you right click on it, you click on add, you see reference. Okay, but if you're using your Visual Studio for Mac, go to Project, and click on Edit Reference. All right, so we're going to search for System. Http System. Net. Http, and we're going to tick it. We're going to tick System. Net as well. So we need to bring in these two references to be able to make use of our Http client. Okay, so once you've ticked this, go ahead and click OK. So once the project is saved, we can go ahead and say HTTP client handler. So let's bring in the reference. Okay. Now we're good. So the next thing we're going to say HTTP client. We're going to call this client equal to new HTTP client. And we're going to pass it our handler. Okay, so we're going to say string result equal to client dot get string async. So this is an asynchronous method. So we need to change this. We need to change the format of our method. It has to be an asynchronous task. Okay, so we're going to need to change this to async task. So we're going to bring a reference of task. System of trading the task, okay? Of type of string, okay? So at this point, we're going to add a wait here because this is an awaitable function. We're going to pass our URL. 
So this works well. The last thing we're going to do is to say return result. Okay, so this will return a result for us. All right. So the last thing we need to do will be to create a new method that will actually, you know, decode the result that we'll get from this particular request. Okay, like I mentioned earlier, this is the kind of response that we're expecting when we make that web request. Okay, the formatted address is what we're actually looking for. So this is the kind of data that we're expecting. So we need to deserialize this data. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing here. So this method, we're going to call it find coordinate address. So we're going to say public public async task. So we're going to say public async task of type of string. We're going to call it find coordinate address. Okay. So we need to pass it a position. All right. So our position should be in the form of latitude and longitude values. So we're going to use our latitude and longitude object of the map. So for us to fully set up this particular method, we need to pass it a position. The position needs to be in a form of latitude and longitude. So we're going to use a lat -long object. So we're going to say lat -long. We're going to bring in the reference map model. We're going to call it position. This will actually mean our current position. So whenever we swipe on the map, our new position is what we are going to be sending to this particular method. All right. So now that we've done that, so whenever we call this function and pass it our position, we need to get our URL. That's what we now call this particular method. So we're going to say, so we say string URL will be equal to we're going to say string URL equal to get your code URL position dot latitude position dot longitude. Okay. So let's define string JSON. So we're going to use this to collect the value of our JSON. And we're going to use this to collect the value of our place address. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is to now play, make our request. Okay. So to make our request, we're going to say JSON equal to await to JSON async. And we're going to pass it our URL. So like I said earlier, Making use of the HTTP client is very handy and it's very shorthand. So as you can see, this will actually return, this will actually make the request and return to us this JSON stream. So the next thing we're going to do is to deserialize this particular JSON, right? So to be able to deserialize this JSON, we have to make a new class. But we don't need to worry about that because I've already made the class. So guys, we need to go ahead and download the class and add it to our project. So I'm going to add our decoding parser to our project and we'll go over it once and for all. I'm going to add this file, resources, and these are decoding parsers. I'm going to go ahead and add it. So guys, let's open our decoding parser and see what we have inside. This class actually helps us to deserialize the data, that chunk of data, deserialize it node by node and it helps us to find our formatted address. So guys, we are going to go back into our map function helper and make use of this decoding parser. So we need to first of all check if our JSON string is actually a real string. So we're going to say if not string JSON. So later on guys, we actually need to be checking for internet connection. But we come back to this. So I'm going to just put a comment here so that we know that we need to do it. Okay. So let's continue. So before we go ahead and deserialize our JSON, we need to install our JSON Nugget package. 
we've not installed it up to this point so we need to go to our nugget package manager and nugget so let's go ahead and download the newtonsoft.json so this is what we are looking for so we'll go ahead and add this package this will actually help us to work with json files so the package we just added will actually help us to be able to work well with our json strings okay so to do that we're going to say var joco data joco data equal to json convert so let's bring in this reference json convert okay so let's continue dot deserialize this realize object of geocode geocoding parser so let's bring in the reference to this particular file okay so now that we have that we're gonna pass it our JSON so this particular line of code will deserialize um, our JSON string and make it easier for us to access the data inside of it. So now we're just going to go ahead and get our place results. So before that, we're going to ensure that our status is not zero. So these checks are very important so that you know what's going on. So this is to ensure that our JSON contains some results, okay? So we're going to go ahead and say place address equal to jucodata.results0 dot formatted address. So guys, this is actually what we are looking at. The results, as you can see, the first one that we got back, the first result, that is the results with the index of zero, is this. So for this particular location coordinate, the formatted address that we actually would have picked if we are actually doing this from an app is Akoku, all right? So if you go down, you find out that there are some other formatted addresses, but the, the most reliable is always the first one. So we'll always go ahead and choose the first one, okay? So let's go back on our code. So when we selected our place address, we need to return it, okay? So we're going to go ahead and say return place address. Bam. So bam. So we are done with this. Now we need to go to our main activity. So we need to add a new event handler to our map. So whenever our map receives a movement and is idle, we want it to trigger that particular method. We want to call that method. So we're going to go to our map ready. So on our map ready, we're going to add a new event handler to our map. Okay, so we're going to say main map dot idle, camera idle rather. So as the name says, this event is always triggered whenever the camera is idle. So when you move your map and it moves to a new point and the camera becomes idle, it will fire this event. So in this event handler, we will always call this method the find coordinate address. Okay, so let's go ahead and set it up was equal to okay okay so now that we've set up this function we need to create an instance of our map function helper all right so we need to make it a global variable so that we can always access it from anywhere within our application so we're gonna go here and say I want to keep things a little bit organized so I'm gonna call this helpers so we're gonna say map function helper I'm going to call this map helper okay so I want to initialize it when our map is ready okay so this is where I actually want to initialize this so before we go ahead and initialize our map function helper we need to lay our hands on our map key okay so we're going to say string map key 
as you guys remember, we had it in our string the SML. So this is our map key. Our map key we can use it for any of the APIs that has to do with maps. Okay, so we need to actually grab this. Okay, so to do that, we're gonna say resources the guest string. We're gonna pass it our string resource the string the map key okay so this will actually give us our map key so we're gonna say map helpers equal to new map function helper we're gonna pass it our map key okay so this will actually do the magic for us so now that we've successfully instantiated our map function helper when our map has completely loaded so we're gonna go ahead and now say pick up location test because this is where I want to display the new address that we just got from our API. So we're gonna say map helper dot find coordinate address. Okay. So guys, to finalize with this, we need to pass it our position. So to get our position, we need to know exactly where the map stopped. We need to know exactly where our map is pointing at okay so to do that we need a new instance of latitude and longitude and this will be our pickup latitude and longitude but this needs to be a global variable so that we can always assess it okay so let's go on top of our class we're gonna call this trim details we're gonna say lat launch we're gonna call this pickup location lat launch okay so now let's go back to our camera idle event handler okay so now we're gonna say pick up lat launch will be equal to be equal to main map the camera position so we're gonna get our camera position okay camera position dot target so this will return a lat launch instance for us, okay? So this will actually be the position we will pass to this function. So we're gonna pass this, pick up lat launch. So as you guys remember, this is an awaitable function, all right? This is an asynchronous function, okay? So we need to make this async as well. Async, we need to add await to this place. So that's all we need to do. So guys, this is just how to do that. So we need to now run our application and ensure that everything works perfectly well. Okay, so let's run our app. Good. So it seems it's working. Bam. So it's working just the way we expected. As you can see our location is being updated. As you can see our location is being updated. So guys, this is just how straightforward it is to you know get our address using our location coordinates. So thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the class. So, see you in the next class.